Welcome to Photo Op, the podcast where we talk about all things photo and video. I'm your host, Ben Lucas. And I'm Stuart Marlantis. And this is the Photography Opinion Podcast Show. Yes, it is. <laughs> so we are starting every episode with a listener question. This week's question comes from Paul. Yes, Paul. Thanks for sending in your question. His question is, would you rather err on the side of too many shots or too few shots? Mm. When I first started years ago, I always erred on way too many shots, and it usually meant most of my photos were sloppy and overall just not great. It was kind of disheartening getting five good shots from, shots from an outing and having to sift through 200 shots to get there. Now I find myself learning, leaning the opposite way, trying to only keep the best perfect raws on my cameras to have way fewer to go through at the end of the day. This saves time, but I often find myself wishing I'd taken a picture of this thing or that person. Which to you seems like the safer side to edge towards? Mm. So when when I first heard this question, I honestly thought he was going a complete opposite direction. Like when you're showing photos, yeah. do you err on showing too many or too few? Um, which... If that were the question, I would err on the side of too few because yeah. people judge you on your worst photo. Um, although there is definitely said something to be said for uh, variety. Mm -hmm. So you need to get better at getting more, but, but you still need to cull down and show the fewest possible. Certainly in general, uh, quality over quantity for that Abs kind of situation. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, but it looks like the question here isn't actually when it comes to showing your photos, it's more sniper versus shotgun mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you, or machine gun rather. Do you spray and pray or do you, do you pick and choose your moments? I am a classic spray and pray. <laughs> every, every time, I wasn't I haven't been feeling well and my brain's just not kind of in that space and I go mm -hmm. today's a spray and pray kind of day I go home and hate myself because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm normally a sniper not a machine gun um yeah I would say that um I am a spray and pray kind of person but I don't necessarily think that's the right way to do it that's just the way that I do it that's that's fair <laughs> I, I think if you're i think if you're good enough that you are able to like me yes <laughs> if you're a real photographer and you're good enough that you can get it in a minimum number of shots um that certainly i mean that can cut down on so much time elsewhere. oh absolutely i feel like spray and pray is the equivalent of we'll get it in post yeah. 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 I was just like, you know what? One of those will work. It'll be okay. And then guess what? None of those will work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like, well, I guess this one's the least bad. Okay. Yeah, that's that's kind of how um, that goes. One thing that I will say here, though, is when it comes to uh, when it comes to I go through my shots at the end of the day and I find myself wishing I had taken a, this thing or that thing. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, when is the next time this opportunity will come up? So if you're on vacation, when's the next time I'm coming back to this place? Mm -hmm. If it's just a day hike and you're like, well, I can do it next weekend, err on the side of less. That's yeah. fine. But if you go to Iceland or mm. India and you're like, well, this isn't happening again. Uh, no, shoot it now. When's the next time you're coming <laughs> back? You're not. <laughs> it's like when people say like, how many uh, exposures should I bracket? Should I do three, five, nine? When's the next time you're coming back? <laughs> like more more <laughs> like i i will bracket nine exposures and understand that four out of five of those will have no detail in them yeah they'll just be so horribly exposed but i'm like you know what i'm gonna get my range it's yeah for sure it's gonna be for done sure. yeah i think um and i think this is kind of hopefully this helps but i think this is kind of sidestepping it a little bit like e more maybe safer technically in more situations but i don't think that's the but best way to go yeah you're always shooting it's just more. so much extra work and probably not for a better work probably yeah. not no. yeah yeah which i do feel like this kind of leads into today's question which mm. is excellent what is a good photographer mm. so uh there was is a good photographer? there was another uh discuss not me <laughs> <laughs> there was another discussion that I saw online that kind of prompted this. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, I realized I'm not better at photography. I'm just more efficient. And a lot of the comments were like, that means you're better Sounds like at you're better. photography. <laughs> um, but I feel like what we're talking today is the difference between floor and ceiling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, 
Yeah, I mean, getting better at photography when he says, oh, I'm not getting better. I'm just uh, more efficient. He's raising the floor. It means yeah. he gets the good shot more often and he gets it faster and he, he gets what he needs right out of the gate. And I feel like that is the mark of a true professional. Yeah, consistency is the mark of a true professional. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, raising sure. the floor. Um, do you, I, I feel like I haven't exactly uh, defined that if you want to what what's floor versus floor ceiling, versus ceiling well, yeah so you're when you're how do i phrase this uh when you're getting better at something you're raising the floor in in like what you can consistently do but you also raise the ceiling at the same time what you can do at your absolute mm -hmm. peak like your best possible work the floor is just the work that you can just crank out without really thinking about it the ceiling is it might be on a good day. It might yeah. be yeah, on a good day. It might be a struggle. It might take a lot of work. Maybe you even get slightly lucky in there a little bit at the same time. But you know, the, the actual, the cream of the crop, so to speak. Um, and you, you adjust both of those adjust as you proceed in both your of career. Those should be going up, but I can totally understand. Um, it, it's that, it's that Valley that I, my very first day owning a camera, my mm -hmm. very first photo shoot, I took a phenomenal photo out of, pure luck <laughs> i have i started with an incredibly high ceiling and a very low floor everything else that day was garbage mm -hmm. and it took me a very long time for that floor to creep up high enough that i could then start raising the ceiling yeah well and i feel like the ceiling uh looks further closer or further away depending on where you are too you know uh the classic thing is the the more you know um the often less, the less you know yeah because the less you, you know, know you know <laughs> nothing exactly so sometimes that ceiling looks really you actually could totally touch it but it looks to you so far away because you're like ah, oh, i just suck like look at all these things that i'm not good at but really you're it's way like better the guy than you think who's you are drowning and you're like stand up yeah it's like a foot deep <laughs> exactly well you know we've talked about this before it's the classic um your tastes uh you're in a good place if your tastes are outstripping your ability mm -hmm. like you're always th then you're always going to be pushing yourself to be better and that's a good place to be not always a happy place to be, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> it's the creator's curse. Yay. Because as you were making a thing, you got better and your, your taste improved. So mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. you're not happy with the thing because your tastes are now better than the product you made. So you're mm -hmm. never happy with anything you make. Isn't that neat? Yeah, yeah. So you just hate Yay. your work forever. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, but, uh, this person that said, um, I'm not getting better. I'm just getting more efficient of like, great. That is better. Get that one. That is better. Even mm -hmm. if he does absolutely nothing to raise his ceiling, mm -hmm. if you can walk out and your first shot of the day is the keeper and you know, you're done, mm -hmm. you're like, wow, you just did a full photo shoot. And how long did that take you? Like I would take that any day. That yeah, sounds for phenomenal. Sure. For sure. Yeah. You, you don't want, you don't want to, you, People are hiring you, if you're professional, people are hiring you to get that consistently in a reasonable amount of time. People don't want to pay you to screw around for 10 hours and hopefully get lucky, right? I mean, yeah, that's, indeed. that's not the deal. So consistency is is better, is better. I, I will say, so uh, we have talked so much on the show about the Lawa uh, Pro Blends. Mm -hmm. So much, hashtag not sponsored. It's right off camera right now. You can't see it, it but is, it's over. It I, can right see, there. I can see it. <laughs> right there. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, so, so, so we've talked so much about this and as we have kind of been playing and experimenting with this lens mm -hmm. we've been learning what can it do what can't it do this is such a weird strange thing that has all of its own quirks oh um, boy whenever whenever we shoot video with it micro jitters has been a huge pain in our butts oh yeah and so we've we're still we're like 99 percent of the way there to figuring it out mm -hmm. but the last time we did it there was like a clamp that like didn't quite meet yeah. where it was supposed to and we're <laughs> so like no how do we ah oh, what is happening right now um so it's like it's a work in progress we're mm -hmm. learning it our how long did our first shoot take oh our i want to say our first shoot was something like, like six hours yeah, i was gonna say like most of a day <laughs> yeah um but i we just did uh we just did this most recent one i want to say in two to three yeah i think it was all like from me arriving to me leaving it was probably like three i think total. it was yeah i yeah. think it was from when you arrived yeah. but that first hour was like unpacking yeah, all the pelican kind of cases of gear bit. and yeah, getting yeah. light stand set up and stuff yeah. once we actually got to shooting mm -hmm. it was like two hours maybe instead of six mm -hmm. yeah for sure 
and looking back at some of the older stuff that we've experimented with, um, I have a lot of the, you know, my, just my snapshots in Google photos and it does the classic thing where it says, Hey, a year ago, a year ago, you did this. And about a year ago, we played with it in the garden, I think outside. Yeah, that's right. And that's right. so, so then that kind of uh, piqued my interest and I was like, Oh yeah, like let's look at some of the early stuff. And it's so there, there's such a stark difference. Yeah, it's so rudimentary. It's like we've gotten so much fancier with lighting and the movement through the scene and, and figuring out tricks like um, when we did that that scene where uh, where there's a landscape and all these figures and mm. we tr- we made you think that it was going through certain places when we were, really we were physically moving those pieces apart so it looked like we were going through it instead of, uh, instead of actually moving it physically. There's tricks like that that we just learned by practicing that that in shooting through that lens looks fantastic and looks seamless, but you just have to play around with it and figure what are, what its limitations are and how you work around them. Yeah. Um, yeah. it also, it, one of the amazing things about it is how wide angle it is. Yeah. And one of the things that I hate about it is how wide angle it is, <laughs> because if you try so setting true. up a backdrop, you immediately start shooting off your backdrop. Mm-hmm. You essentially mm-hmm. have to have like a 20 foot psych wall to shoot a Lego minifig yep. because you see the whole damn studio behind the, that tiny little thing um so yeah it just um it 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 is kind of its own beast and it takes things to learn yeah and i feel like i I feel like i brought that up today because i've been doing this for god i want to say like almost 12 years now Mm -hmm. it has been a while um but this is something that i am only uh, like a year old to using the pro blends yeah. so this is kind of new and experimenting and i'm trying to learn the physics of it and the limitations of it and the uh, abilities and where through movement and unlocking stuff and it's funny because we determined very early on that lens sucks if you don't have movement Oh yeah. Like, yeah. like it's okay as a photography lens, but it shines as a video lens. That's mm-hmm. really mm-hmm. where you want to be at. And we argued for probably like an hour on our last shoot about how to include movement. And we realized lock down a tripod. Don't move the camera, move the, move thing. the thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh yeah. And that's, and that's stuff that you don't know. Like if, if, if we had bought it and somebody had hired us to use it, you know, day one, Oh boy. I mean, first you shouldn't, use equipment that you just bought for for, for no, a page no, no. shoot but test, test something before you but, use it on a page shoot yeah you, but beyond that like that would have taken so much longer and been so much more difficult and, and it wouldn't have looked as good and it wouldn't have looked as good and now we could crank out stuff like that so much easier it's still going to be tricky i mean we're still learning it it's a difficult tool to be fair but um so much more approachable you know two hours versus six hours i mean we're cutting a lot oh, of time absolutely. down. Yeah. Um, the, the other thing too is like we had ideas and our ideas got close and what we would have been ecstatic to get a mm-hmm. year ago, we go, that's okay. We could do better. <laughs> that's because with that tool, our ceiling went up. Yep. We know that the ability that we have with it has gone up. And so uh, our floor is going up in that we're getting cooler shots sooner, mm-hmm. but our ceiling's going up in that that shot that we got through the garden that was only mediocre yeah. now of we were happy with that a year ago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but now we look at that and go, no, that's not good. That's, yeah. that's your ceiling. <laughs> our ceiling's getting raised and we're getting more efficient. That's your floor. Your floor is going up. Sure. So if only we one of these two things is going up of like you're getting technically better but you're still having issues um i i feel like there are different ways to raise your floor versus raise your ceiling and if only one of them's going up that might um that might uh give you bad feelings that might Mm -hmm. be uh despair or anxiety or like well and you should hopelessness of like (laughs) of like do do you too feel like you're not getting better at photography of just like man i've been trying everything and it's just not working it's Mm -hmm. like well maybe it's because um one of them has been getting better but you're only looking at the other one that hasn't been moving as much yep yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the one, like we said, with the ceiling where it just seems perpetually far yeah, away. Yeah, the ceiling just keeps yeah, on getting yeah. higher. But that also means that it, if it's mm-hmm. getting farther away from you, that also means that you're getting better. Yeah, It might sure. take you longer to get there, but you're getting better. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, what, you know, circling back to the original question, what makes a good photographer then? The, so, 
so the having having that high skill ceiling mm-hmm. of what are the technical limits of their creativity ability mm-hmm. um what can they do um and then i think the other thing is raising that floor yep. because there might be a photographer whose portfolio is fantastic and then when you hire them they are a hot mess <laughs> and they send you 200 shots 199 of them are complete garbage and the 200th one goes eh, maybe i can fix it in post yeah of like yeah they're technically able to get that Mm -hmm. high but uh they well you know they need to raise that floor a little bit so i think it really comes down to both those things Mm -hmm. of that's that's what makes you good you need to have that high skill but you also need to be skilled enough that you it's consistent it's repeatable and your floor and your ceiling should always be moving upward. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Um, and also for you gearheads, uh, this is the only time I would say that uh, gear acquisition syndrome is uh, is appropriate. If you really can't reach that ceiling because of a piece of gear, that might be one of the real times yes. where you could buy something. Yes, it, actually, <laughs> no. This is this is perfect because when when people ask me what blank should I buy. Mm-hmm. Um, I always have to take a step back because my answer is about to be, I don't know. Don't ask me. This is a bad question. Mm -hmm. Um, Because really what the answer to that question is right now, if you're asking me that question, it tells me you don't know enough Yeah, that your floor and your ceiling are both very, very low (laughs) and literally anything you get should get the job done. It should do the trick. Yeah. Um, and when you get to a high enough floor that your floor has met your ceiling mm-hmm. and literally you can't get higher than that because some technical ability is limiting you and you know for a fact, Ben, back in 2008, that your Canon Rebel <laughs> XSI tops out at 800 ISO on a good day uh-huh, and uh-huh. you cannot shoot inside that cathedral. Hey, maybe I need a 5D Mark III that's new and shiny and can do 64,000 yep. ISO yep. Uh, at what is it uh 11 8 9 frames per second instead of three mm-hmm. and yeah, then i was trying to shoot for a uh, first kiss on motor drive at three frames per second and then to bring it back it a little bit good. you stuck with that camera for i mean still <laughs> still still i i will say i get jealous when you pull yours out and it has like night vision goggles yeah. but like other than that mine gets the job done i'm happy with it in fact i bought another one when they discontinued it because yeah it's cheap now yeah. um and yeah. you, and it still isn't really limiting your ceiling so it's, it's yeah. not it's so not. so take those comments with a grain of salt doesn't mean that you should just say well my ceiling is uh uh wherever i arbitrarily put it for gear no be honest with yourself come on <laughs> yeah but no i i think you're absolutely right of just like should i buy the gear if that is a literally defining your ceiling yeah yeah buy the thing if, if you want to make your floor where that would make you know where your ceiling is with that piece of equipment. How do I phrase this? If you want to raise your floor to your ceiling using that piece of equipment. Okay. Ooh, this is interesting. (laughs) Okay. So I don't think buying the gear will raise your floor. Well, I mean, it might, I'm not, if if you, if you have, if you have a Mm -hmm. flash trigger that doesn't work and you buy a pocket wizard, now it works every time. That's one thing. That's what I mean. But uh, I think more of of like once your skill, your floor has reached the ceiling of I literally cannot do this next thing because I do not have a yeah the mm-hmm. the camera that can do the thing. Well, now that I feel like that is more of when yep. when you buy the exactly things. what I mean. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. So uh, I want to cap off this episode with what do you think a tip would be to raise the floor versus tip to raise the ceiling? Because I feel like the two are different. Uh, actually. I would disagree Ooh. because both raising the floor and raising the ceiling is with one word practice. Oh, snap. <laughs> Mic drop. Uh, see, I, I was actually going to say something more along the lines of um, practice is what raises, raises the floor, making sure mm-hmm. that you can get, get good as they say um but uh trying trying new techniques and tutorials and uh things that you are not um things that you're not practiced in things that you don't know so like uh so those are uh trying and experimenting new basically taking time to fail Mm -hmm. yeah i would say yeah you're uh practicing your table stakes um, you know, practicing your, your day-to-day work is your floor. 
and practicing your experimental work is your ceiling. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there's definitely ways that you can uh, raise both those and practice definitely mm-hmm. raises both those. Um, but no, I think, I think that's a, that's a good, good way to define a good photographer. It's a quick, quick two question test. What's the best thing they've ever done? How high does this go? Yep. And how repeatable and consistent can they make that work? Like that's how you rate a good photographer right there. Perfect. But we should, we should make a uh, new website called uh, <laughs> photography floor ceiling dot com. <laughs> uh certainly not it's gotta be like dot what dot photo there's dot there's a, there's a good <laughs> dot photographer that would what be, makes a good dot photo dot photographer that would i wonder how many we'll hits that, that would get <laughs> what is photography floor ceiling is this a real estate thing ben i don't need to own more domains Stop. <laughs> hey Stuart, you should buy some more domains hey listener if you want to help Stuart buy more domains uh, you should donate to the patreon yeah behind Patri- the curtain i own dozens <laughs> <laughs> patreon dot, are you sure it's only two digits uh, yeah, but high two digits. <laughs> <laughs> Patreon.com slash nom creative if you want to help Stewart's addiction with owning domain names. Uh, otherwise, uh, thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next week. And uh, send in your questions. Well, we love listener questions and we need some more of them right now. Yep. So you and go. you'll get that email in the outro. But I'm bump. If you have questions or ideas for future episodes, you can email us at hello at photo-op.show. Watch us on Ben's YouTube channel at Nom Creative. As in Om Nom Nom. Share this with a friend and you can listen to Photo Op anywhere podcasts are sold. Or download it. Because it's free.